Hi, I'm meteorologist Elisa Rafa on staff at Discovery Place Science. In this episode of Weather Wonders, we're talking about winter forecasting, the tale of types and totals, the headache for meteorologists. So this will really give you kind of an inside behind the scene look to how we forecast and maybe help you understand how that winter forecasting happens just a little bit better. So key thing when it comes to winter forecasting is actually warm air might seem a little opposite, right? Warm air is really key to the types of precipitation that we see in the winter. Because what happens is sometimes in some storms we can get warm air, which is less dense, to kind of sit on top of cold air, which is more dense. So the layer of air, if you think of it 3D like a panel of old air on top of your head, it's not always the same temperature. It can change as you go upstairs in the atmosphere. So sometimes it's all warm and then you get rain or sometimes it's mostly warm, and then there's this little slither of freezing cold air at the bottom. Sometimes there's just a tiny slither of warm air, and then there's that bigger layer of cold air, and that's where you can get sleet. And then sometimes you get the all cold air in the column, right? So we call this a warm nose, because if you look at the warm air here, it looks like a nose, just kind of nosing into some of that cold air. So how does this affect precipitation type, right? So when you look at a column that has all warm air, well, anything that might be a little bit cold upstairs in the atmosphere melts all the way and just hits as plain rain as you get onto the ground. Well, let's say we have some cold air at the bottom, right? So most of the air is warm. So we're melting, we've got all this rain, but then you have this layer of freezing rain right on the ground. Well, what happens is, is that rain is going to fall and then freeze on contact onto the ground. That's called freezing rain. It often looks like a glaze of ice, you know, kind of a glaze, uh, often sticks to windshield and um, elevated surfaces like chairs and railings and things like that. And it will glaze on like a clear glaze. And then it will also have, it could also have like little icicles on it too. So that's freezing rain. Okay, well, what happens if that layer of cold air is even bigger? So we have warm air, but the layer of cold air at the bottom is fatter. So what happens is, is that rain falls and then it freezes in the middle of the air. And because it has more time to freeze in the middle of the air, you can get these like little ice pellets. And these ice pellets are really tiny and they're clear. They look like little tiny, ice cube balls. <laughs> they're really tiny little balls of ice. And you'll often hear them kind of pitter-patter and bounce. If you hear the bouncing outside on the sidewalk on the deck, that is sleet as it's hitting the ground. Okay, well, what happens when the layer is all cold? Well, that's snow, right? It falls as that dendrite, that ice crystal all the way down, and that's where you get some of that snow to fall. Now, to make matters even more complicated for a meteorologist, right? So we just talked about all those precipitation types and just little bits of a temperature change could really change it from sleet to snow or freezing rain. Well, even when you get all snow, temperature and moisture still impact that. Okay, so in a typical snowstorm, you have one inch of water, usually equals about 10 inches of snow. It's not always equal as far as moisture in the atmosphere. So typically our rule of thumb is one inch of water is 10 inches of snow. But that's when the storm is at like 30 degrees. That's when your temperature is at 30 degrees warmer air holds more moisture. So if your temperatures are a little bit warmer, maybe a little bit above freezing, like 34 degrees, sometimes you can still get snow, but that's a very wet snow. There's a lot more moisture in the air. So that snow as it hits the ground because it's very wet and juicy, kind of compacts. It's like that snowball snow, right? That just compacts very easily. So now instead of getting 10 inches of snow, the way it accumulates, you only get five. And that's just because it's a few degrees warmer. On the flip side, if you have a very arctic storm and temperatures are in the teens and maybe 20s, that's a very dry snow because that colder air doesn't have as much moisture and there's more dry air in between the little pieces of the snowflake. So that's where you get that very like fluffy, powdery snow. We get the whiteout conditions of the snow flying around everywhere and it doesn't really make good snowmen. And again, all it is is because it's colder, so the air is drier. So it doesn't really like sit on the ground as much as well. So it really just piles up and then you're looking at uh, 20 inches of snow in the same storm, just because those temperatures might be a little bit cooler 
and the air is dry. So again, forecasting headache. So what are some of the takeaways? Temperature and moisture really uh, have a lot to do with the type of precipitation and how it accumulates. And that is heavily dependent on the track of the storm. A little bit of movement in the track of the storm can change the type and the totals of that wintry precipitation. Just two degrees difference can mean the difference between freezing rain or sleet or snow or heavy snow or wet snow. And it just, again, it, it, small differences can also mean big differences when you're talking about totals. Charlotte is often too warm for snow. That's usually our forecasting headache. You usually wind up getting sleet or freezing rain because we're just a hair too warm for snow. Those warmer temperatures, like I mentioned, mean that icy mix and, and less snow. So be patient with meteorologists, be patient with the forecast and keep checking for updates because these small changes in temperature and moisture can really mean big changes in that wintry weather. Again, just a forecasting challenge for meteorologists.